Hey, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Today is June 3rd, very special day. Notice that it's not June 4th. Today is not Thursday. We're doing the AMA on Wednesday and one hour later, a special edition AMA for today. We uh, are unveiling virtual Ride for the Living. Everyone knows about Ride for the Living. Today, we are start unveiling our special event, Virtual Ride for the Living. Uh, it's uh, going to be, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Just want to cover some housekeeping first, uh, what we usually talk about. And then today, two very, very special guests. First, I'm going to be joined by Ryan Kaplan, who is our JDC Entwine Global Jewish Service Corps Fellow. Ryan is now back home in Atlanta, uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about the ride. And then uh, a hero to many of us, uh, a faithful viewer of AMA with Jonathan Ornstein, Marcel Zielinski, our Holocaust survivor, Auschwitz survivor, multiple uh, time Ride for the Living participant who's going to talk about his involvement and why he's so excited this year about virtual ride. He can't be with us uh, because we're not doing the ride this year, uh, the regular ride, but Marcel, as hopefully many of you will be joining the virtual ride. So very special edition, exciting, lots to talk about. Uh, before that, before I talk about Poland, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in the U.S. Heartbreaking, very difficult uh, for me to, to watch, for all of us to watch, especially as a New Yorker, watching what's been happening in New York. First, Corona, the, the tragedy of Corona across the U.S. and uh, with New York City being hit very hard and now seeing uh, what happened in the response, uh, seeing, first of all, the, the tragic murder of, uh, of George Floyd and then the, the, the response across the US has been very, very difficult to see. Um, our hearts here in, in Poland and Krakow go out to all the people suffering, but I think first and foremost to really an African-American community in the United States that, you know, all these things that we as, as white people sort of understand a little bit that we think about it and we know and we hear a story and the police uh, you know, doing, you know, here and there, here's something about it. But in the last few weeks, I think we've really come to understand that uh, race, how pervasive racism is uh, and, and, a, and, a, and an evil type of murderous racism is in the United States. And um, I hope that the positive will come of this, that this can be a turning point. Uh, it's painful to watch, you know, peaceful protests become riots, become looting, but you know, at the end of the day, I think the focus really needs to be on this really system systemic racism in the United States. And if we deal with that, I'm sure that uh, that the other other issues surrounding it, like like looting and, uh, and you know rioting and things beyond, obviously the the appropriate peaceful protests will go on. A friend of mine, Zach Bodner, posted a, a great quote the other day that I wanted to really stuck with me. It's been in my head all week, and I wanted to I wanted to share it with you which it's an old African proverb, which says, the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. I think that really speaks, speaks a lot to what's, what's going on today in the United States, that people are fed up and people are angry and people feel that the system has failed them and they have no, no motivation to be part of that system anymore. And it's just random violence and destruction. And I don't think for most people, it's not about theft. It's not about getting something for free. Even those who are looting, it's about, I think for many of them at least, and I'm not, I'm not there, I'm not in their minds, but I think it's just this idea of, of just understanding that, wait, if the system just has failed us, then why do we need to in any sense be part of the system? And uh, hopefully that will change. Hopefully this will be a wake up call to the United States, not only the United States, but certainly it's a major problem um, you know, we've been talking about police reform for a long time. Uh, the police have a very difficult job, no doubt. Um, it's, it's not easy to be in a uniform, to be the target of, 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 you know, of hatred and to have that responsibility. But on the other hand, wearing that uniform and being in that position of authority gives you a special moral responsibility to go above and beyond to, to be fair and not to, not to target people just because of their, uh, the color of their skin or if they're gay or, or Jewish or Muslim or anything else. So 
I don't know, hopefully things will, will calm down, but I can tell you it's just, uh, you know, from here, it's difficult to be there, but in some ways it's always very difficult to be away when you're, something bad is happening in the place that you're from. It's tough, it's tough not to be there, but I hope we can uh, get to, get to happier, happier days. And today we're gonna talk about some, some better things. Uh, in terms of Poland, where we are uh, in terms of uh, Corona, Poland has really started to open up. I can tell you last night, I went for a walk with uh, my dog about 10.30 at night. And maybe a month ago, it was completely empty outside. Now people are out. I actually forgot my mask yesterday. I'm really pretty diligent uh, uh, with, with wearing a mask all the time. Um, but last night I forgot my mask and I, went, I walked and there were people outside and nobody was wearing a mask, nobody. And when I walked to work this morning in my mask, I was really the only one. So Poland, for better or for worse, true or not true, believes that, uh, that, things, are, that things are becoming safer. I'm not, I'm not completely sold on it. Just want to shout out to people. Michael Trice and no sound. You guys hear me though? Michael, I think it might be you. Nobody else is, uh, I haven't heard any other issues. I have the crack team watching it, letting me know. So I, I think, uh, okay. Neil Zuckerman, good morning, Rabbi Neil. Good sh shout out to Rabbi Neil's son. Who is in the IDF? Who was uh, one of the was a Chayal Mitzdayen who got an award as uh, one of the best soldiers in his unit just uh, just the other day. So shout out to you, Neil. Pani Zosha there, Warner Girls plus Alex. Good to see everybody there. So I was talking about where we are in terms of Poland. Things really opening up. Uh, so far, uh, we're at twenty four thousand cases, about less than two thousand cases since last week. Um, 50 something people passed away this week with 12,000 recovered. What that means in terms, we are in the fourth stage. As I mentioned all the time, there are four stages of lifting the restrictions. We are in the fourth stage. It's still, you still have to wear a mask on buses, trams, theaters and cinemas and tattoo salons, massage parlors, churches and offices. It's not ob obligatory at the workplace to wear a mask if the required distance is kept. We have not opened yet. As of now, it's still for us, only the preschool. We're gonna wait a couple of weeks, I feel, to see how things look. If people start getting sick in big numbers, then, we, uh, then obviously we made the right decision. I think it's uh, prudent at this point, to be honest, if I take a step back and I look at it, I think that we've been closed for three months. I'd rather be closed for a couple of weeks too long then open up a little too early and have people getting sick, especially you're talking about Holocaust survivors is such a big part of what we do here. And I absolutely uh, can't risk the safety of our survivors uh, by having them back in the building and, and exposing them to, to other people. So hopefully that soon, but that's where we are. That's where we are today on June 3rd. As of Saturday, uh, you can organize weddings for up to 150 people and the guests don't have to wear masks. I assume that uh, that extends to the bride and groom who don't have to wear masks. From Saturday, June 6th, also hotel gym, swimming, hotel gym, swimming pools and fitness clubs, theaters, all of these things, movie theaters, operas, ballet are opening. The borders are still closed. They're talking about opening the borders on June 15th. We'll see about that. I've been in Poland since the beginning of March. I've absolutely not been here so long, in a very, very long time. I, to be honest, as much as I love Kazimierz and Krakow, that 150 meter walk, that 400 feet in between my house and, my, and, and the JCC is, uh, has been my whole life pretty much for three months. So I wouldn't mind expanding that a little bit. And something interesting, presidential elections taking place on June 28th. We'll see uh, President Duda, uh, the current president, uh, is still heavily favored to win re-election. The, the, the election is supposed to be about a month ago and they moved that, they moved that to June 28th. Uh, I'm not sure if that's officially 100%, but that's what I heard today. And we'll see about that, uh, where we go. So I wanna now bring on, I'm not gonna really talk, we don't have that much time today. We have a lot of full schedules. So I won't talk about what I've been watching. I don't think I've watched anything too particularly interesting. Anyway, today is not about that. Today is about virtual ride for the living. So I'm gonna bring on Ryan Kaplan. Ryan is just, there we go. Good morning to you, Ryan. Morning, how's it going? As I said, Ryan is our JDC fellow. Ryan, you are now broadcast, you're coming to us. Where are you? 
Live from Atlanta. Live, Live from, from Atlanta. Atlanta. Ryan, you are a sixth JDC fellow. First of all, how is it being a fellow? You're not here right now, but how's your fellowship going at the JCC? Great so far. Uh, prior to coming home, I was there for about six months. So I uh, certainly settled in and was feeling pretty comfortable. And then obviously Corona kind of threw a wrench in things. Uh, but I will say that I think we've adapted as a team pretty pretty well and pretty easily. And uh, we were certainly able to turn things around for the right for the living this year uh, while working remotely and virtually. So uh, no harm, no foul so far. And uh, it's been it's been kind of nice being home for a little while. All things considered, I would still prefer to be in Krakow. Don't get me wrong. But are you saying that mom's cooking is better than uh, Kashmir's restaurants? Well, you know, but you can only have so many pierogi and maybe I'll be, you know, maybe I'll be uh, detained when I get back to Krakow for saying that. But yeah, uh, yeah mom's mom's cooking is actually pretty good. And might in stop the you at the border. Household, so. No grits, no chicken and biscuits in, uh, in Krakow. <laughs> Although there was a there was a women's group from Atlanta who came in February, uh, and and I'm friendly with several of them, and they brought me a nice Atlanta care package that had some grits in them. So ah, I got my nice. I got my fix in February. That was a wonderful wonderful uh, group from Atlanta. I give a shout out, Marsha Miller. One one person in that group has been very very generous. Actually gave us a, a very big donation, and then to help our survivors, and then actually set up a matching gift in Atlanta that you're working on. So for us, tremendous as a bunch of our friends there set up a $50,000 matching gift. So uh, hats right. off Atlanta for all of us in Krakow. Atlanta's our favorite city these days. Don't tell New York. No, 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 New York. New York knows it's always, it's always really New York. Uh, hi, <laughs> Wendy. Hi, Linda. Benji making hamantash. And keep it up with the hamantash, Benji. Keep it up, Benji. Uh, so, well, you actually, Ryan, it's interesting because you've been very involved with Ride for the Living and now virtual Ride for the Living, and you haven't done Ride for the Living yet. Right. Yeah, I haven't. This was going to be my first year, and I was really excited. Uh, obviously, I think a lot of people's first years are going to be have to, you know, they're going to have to shift to next year to 2021. Uh, but that said, we've got a really stellar virtual program that uh, the team has been crafting behind the scenes up until a few weeks ago when we went live. And then obviously today is the massive kickoff, which I'm so happy to be a part of and, and thrilled to be a part of. Uh, and again, all things considered, I think that we, uh, we kind of pumped this out pretty well. And I'm really excited for the next month and, and what's to come. So as everybody knows, or probably most people watching know, Ride for the Living is a 60 mile bicycle ride from Auschwitz to JCC Krakow, inspired by Robert Desmond, a good friend of ours who rode his bike from London to Auschwitz. We realized all together that he couldn't finish in Auschwitz. He's got to finish in Krakow. So in 2014, 15 people got together and rode uh, the 60 miles from Auschwitz to the JCC. And that has grown and grown and grown. Last year, we had 250 with all different, we've had different celebrities and satellite rides. And of course, that this year, we're not able to do the ride. This year was going to be bigger and bigger than ever. There's a film coming out about the ride, lots of good stuff. But we have come up, as you alluded to, with virtual rides. So tell us, Ryan Kaplan, and we'll get into the details in a little bit. Tell us what virtual ride for the living is. And then I have a little surprise for you that I will unveil. Great. So uh, yeah, as you said, you know, obviously people are not coming to Krakow this year, which we're upset about. And we were really bummed for a little while. Uh, and then we, we got together as a team and we decided just because people aren't coming doesn't mean that we can't have a meaningful Ride for the Living experience. Uh, so with the help of, of our development team head, Sebastian, and the Ride for the Living coordinator, Gish, and, uh, and our, our friend and colleague, Anya, uh, we've been crafting this virtual experience so that people could still participate in Ride for the Living, but from the comfort and the safety of their own homes and their own communities so that you know they wouldn't have to travel to Krakow. We minimize some risk. But at the same time, we keep all of our all of our friends and families at home active and healthy uh, and, and up to date with JCC Krakow happenings and ride for the living shenanigans. Uh, so the, the goal of the program is to still hit that 60 mile mark. But instead of doing it in one day on that Friday, uh, we're going to actually ask that people participate throughout the month of June leading up until July 5th. So starting today through July 5th, we'd like you to, to get out of your house or get on your treadmills or Pelotons and, uh, and clock in 
60 miles if you can, or any meaningful number of, uh, of miles or, or any sort of meaningful goal that you might have. Um, and then in the meantime, in addition to the actual, to the activities themselves, we're, we've got a, a programming uh, portfolio that we put together so that people could still be engaged with Holocaust education and, and some of the cool stuff that JCC Krakow has got going on. Uh, and so we've kind of sprinkled and peppered um, some of these really great online virtual events throughout the month so that every few days we'll have something that people can log in and, and learn with. So I understand the virtual ride means that everybody's not coming here to Krakow and getting on bikes and riding from Auschwitz to the JCC, but people are encouraged to run, bike, walk, skateboard, uh, hang swim. glide, swim, swim for the living, do something ar around that 60 mile uh, target over the next month uh, and do it so we can create this community of people that wanna you know, believe, support and get involved with the resurgence of Jewish life in Krakow, is that correct? Exactly. And why? Exactly. Why today, Ryan? Why is today besides good day? Tonight? Oh, why, today's why Wednesday. We why not? What? Why? Why are we unveiling it today? So June third is the uh, United Nations International Bicycle Day, uh, which we planned with them. No, just kidding. I wish, but uh, but it happened to be that we were looking at a great a great date in June to kick off. Uh, and and I think we found we found that June third was the the International Bicycle Day, so it coincides really nicely with what we wanted to do, and it gives us a great starting a starting point for the virtual ride this year. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so I want to I, I have something to unveil, actually, which is the new this year's jersey. Ah. Dun, dun, dun. So. I never stand up in the AMA, but I'm going to <laughs> get myself ready. This, this is, is like that. watching Clark Kent in the telephone. Dun, 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 dun. This is there we go. See, 2020. You guys see it? 2020 jersey looks better on the wall than it does on me. That's amazing. I think it's very, very. Beautiful jersey this year. Our JJ, our amazing graphic designer, came up with that. See on the back. And the pockets. There we go. Pockets. By the way, I think every I think every article of clothing should have pockets on the back. So actually, to 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 go along with the reveal of the jersey, we've got three ways that people can actually get a jersey in america jersey the for first the, jersey for themselves ryan is it true yeah is it possible tell us so how normally we they get jerseys. normally we'd give these we'd give these jerseys to every participant that comes to crack off for the ride um and this year we've got three different ways that you can get one um the first is to uh donate 180 dollars upon registration um for the virtual ride and if you haven't done so already but you've but you've registered you can also make a donation on Kindful, which is our online fundraising platform. Uh, the second way is to recruit 18 of your friends or family members to join us this year. And by the way, registration will remain open throughout the event until July 5th. So if you recruit 18 family members, um, the deadline for that specifically, I think we decided on June 15th. So you've got a little bit over a week, uh, but we'll send you a complimentary jersey with 18 referrals. And then the third way is that if you have not yet registered for the virtual ride uh, and do so while we're live right now on Facebook and we see your registration in the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour, we're gonna put all of those registrations in a hat and we're gonna randomly draw one and uh, the winner of that contest who signs up in the next hour uh, will get a, a complimentary Ride for the Living jersey this year. Wow, so somebody today, one of our viewers today is actually for, gonna get win one of these exciting luxurious jerseys. And I, can I tell you, it's very comfortable. I, I put it on just for the AMA, but I, I have to, I mean, I might wear this all day today. And considering all the social distancing and everything, I might keep it on for a few days. I'm not sure what Kasha will say about that. And yeah, very exciting. So if you sign, get 18 friends to sign up, it's very easy. Let me, let me uh, we should also, say, while there's a fundraising option, you don't need to fundraise. We want people to get involved and to do this and to get in shape after quarantine. And we want 
as many people as possible. So no problem. Get your friends to sign up. Get yourself a free jersey. Get 18 people. It's very easy. Get 18 friends to sign up. Get yourself a free jersey or uh, make a donation. Get a jersey, however you want. But we'd love to. We have lots of these jerseys. We think they're beautiful. And I'll, I'll also add really quickly that if you yeah. signed up in person to come for the regular Ride for the Living this year, uh, we are also going to send you a complimentary jersey no matter what. So if you signed up and paid for the regular Ride for the Living, your jersey is, is already coming to you. Yeah. And I, do I understand that over 200 people have pre-signed up before we went live? Yep. As of this morning, we had 199 people registered. Uh, and as I said, we've got registration open for the rest of the month throughout the throughout the event. Uh, so we hope to double, triple, quadruple, get up to a thousand if we can. And we would really appreciate anyone and everyone who's willing to share on their social networks uh, via email with their friends and families, words of mouth, word of mouth. Um, we're really trying to promote this year uh, and make sure that people are staying active and healthy, and and also that the uh, you know the JCC and Krakow. Uh, can, can, can continue to do its amazing work, which coronavirus has actually made uh, uh, more important. It's always important, but even now, um, now that we're kind of in this, in this weird space, we've got some more pressing matters uh, that a lot of this money that we're raising will, will help support. So we appreciate okay. anyone and everyone who's willing to help and share. Absolutely, we have some questions. Do people need, to, uh, maybe you'll help me with these, but I think I, I also have a clue. Do people need to do the 60 miles? No, you don't need to do 60 miles. You can do 60 miles a day if you want. You can do 60 feet the whole time. You can anything you want, but the, the goal, it's good to have goals in life. So we set the bullseye at 60 miles, which is of course the distance from Auschwitz to the JCC on Ride for the Living. So, uh, so yeah, we, that, that's the goal, but absolutely you don't need to do it. You just need to sign up and get moving. We want people to get in shape, uh, no cost, no problem, no fundraise, no fundraising commitment. Just sign up. Uh, by signing up, not only will you get in shape, but you're also telling the world that there is Jewish life in Poland and that there deserves to be Jewish life in Poland. So it's really a vote of confidence in our community. So we'd love to get you guys to sign up. And because there's real no automatic fundraising thing, you're, it's much easier to pester your friends. I know when I start fundraising and you know with people, which is more or less all I do, it's always I'm always I always think that people see me coming around the corner and run away. Uh, but uh, with this one, you don't need to. If they want to fundraise, great, but really no pressure whatsoever. Let's just get people signed up. Benji is registered and wants to win a dinner with Rabbi Shudrick. Oh, -ho! do do you want Rabbi Shudrick to cook for you, Benji? I, I'm not sure. You name the kosher restaurant and Rabbi Shudrick will be there, Benji. I personally guarantee it. Also, next question, Ryan, by when should people register? By July 5th. No. So as we mentioned. Bad answer, Ryan. They should register uh, right away. Right now, of course. Well, if they want the jersey today, and then obviously registration will stay open. But we want people to register as soon as possible so that they can get moving and so that we can help track their activity. Uh, you know, Ride for the Living is never a competition, even in Poland. It's not a competition. Um, we all ride together from Auschwitz to JCC Krakow. Uh, and this year, it's still not a competition, but because we're using Strava, we are able to track mileage. Um, and alongside that, uh, we're sending everyone virtual badges, uh, depending on, on some of the challenges and the uh, activities that they've accomplished so far. And we're gonna have weekly badge challenges as, a, as well as badges and challenges throughout the month. Um, so the more that you move, the more that you fundraise, the more people you sign up, uh, and the more and the more active you are, the more badges you'll get. And uh, just like whose line is whose line is it anyway? You know the badges they don't really you know we're not we're not cashing them in for anything specific, but they're great. Um, they're great to hold over others' heads. Uh, they're great for kudos and brownie points. And I have a feeling that we've got some people listening right now and uh, commenting in the comment section that that are going to want to collect some of these. Uh, Ryan, uh, my understanding is they are they. Can you exchange them for Bitcoin? Ah, uh, um, I think or I can neither confirm nor deny. Or Ethereum. 
Uh, yeah, maybe maybe that'll be the 2021 rendition of the virtual ride. We'll see. Listen, we'll put Fed, it in the pipeline. The Fed's printing money, Ryan. We gotta we gotta jump on that. <laughs> so no, the badges are just a fun thing. I have no idea we're talking about whose line it is anyway, but I I'll take your word for it. Do next question. Do I have to fundraise? We already we already dealt with that. No, you do not have to fundraise. Just sign up and get moving. Can you join with your kids, Ryan? It's a tough Absolutely, question. you can what join. Is it, Ryan? 100% you can join with your should kids. Join, should we let them join with their kids? I think so. We'll do it. Join with your kids, join your family, have family goal for the ride. It's a good way to move and uh, listen, it's fun. And then next year, Shana Ba Bikraku. I think Rabbi Avi never likes when I say that instead of Yerushalayim, but. <laughs> Quick shout out to Rabbi Avi, son AJ getting married this weekend. Huge, huge simcha for the Baumel family, Korzen families. Met, I met his wife, his fiance, lovely. So we send, send our best wishes to Jerusalem. Oh, to the, around Jerusalem. Uh, okay, Ryan, we are right on time. Now I have the pleasure to introduce a, and I always refer to him and I will never get tired of calling him a hero of mine. Besides you, Ryan, you've become a bit of a hero as well. A little bit. Someone else has had even more time to be a hero who I've known a little bit longer. Marcel Zielinski, uh, who is going to join us now. Marcel is 85. Marcel is an Auschwitz survivor from Krakow. And Marcel is a annual Ride for the Living participant. So just waiting for Marcel to come on. Hopefully we'll get audio and video, but at least audio. Marcel's in Montreal. We tested this yesterday, so it should be okay. How are you there, Marcel? Okay. Seb, I think you're listening. Maybe it's the other account. So Marcel has really become a huge, huge part of our ride family. Let's get you logged in there, Marcel. I see you're about to come online. Oh, there we go. There he is. There he is. You hear, do you hear us okay, Marcel? You there? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, Marcel. Marcel, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Great to see you. I'm so excited to be here. Look at you, Marcel, in your JCC green t-shirt. You see that, Benji? Have you ever seen a JCC t-shirt look so good as on Marcel Zielinski? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, thank you. Wow, good. How, and how are you doing today, Marcel? Wow, well, it's, it's a cloudy day. No, no cycling. We're still uh, locked in our condos. No, no visitors allowed. Hopefully next week uh, things will change, but for now we're still under lockdown. Well, it's great to see you. It's great to see you, Marcel. Uh, so a few questions, Marcel. I know you very often, you speak to a lot of school groups around Montreal. You go on March of the Living every year and you talk about your experience as a, as a boy, young boy in Auschwitz, liberated at the age of 10. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about maybe a little about post-liberation. So when you were liberated at 10, you walked back to Krakow and eventually found your mom. Yes, you, I stayed was. In, you stayed in Poland for a while and became a cyclist. Yes, I, I stayed in Poland till I finished my education, actually university in, in Wrocław, Politechnica. And I graduated electrical engineer. In the meantime, I, I was also a competitive cyclist with a, a cycling club in Wrocław called Pafawag. I lost, I lost the meeting somewhere. No, no, we, hear, we see you, we hear you. We can see you. Yeah, I, I don't see myself, okay. Uh, yeah, don't watch yourself on Facebook because it'll be behind. So just watch on Zoom is better. So, and then from there, you, when you, then you made Aliyah, Marcel, you moved to Israel. 
Uh, yes, uh, I before Aria we we married with Marila. In, uh, your wife, who's also who's also a Holocaust survivor and from Lvov, which is now yeah. Ukraine, now yeah. Ukraine, but was then Poland, right? Yeah, she was. Uh, she lived in Lvov, uh, which is was Poland at that time. She was uh, hiding with her parents, with the Polish family, and this is how she survived. And uh, we met uh, uh, in Wrocław, actually. I was still in, uh, in, in, Pol in school. <clears throat> and um, well, we, we fell in love and we, we married shortly after. And when you moved to Israel, when you made Aliyah with Marilla, uh, did, did you continue riding? Were you a cyclist in Israel? No, not at all. I was... Uh, uh, busy trying to learn the language and uh, so for me don't forget I was brought up in the communist system so I, I had no idea what what it looks like to, to live in a in a free country I had to reorient myself and uh, it was it was tough was uh, getting settled in and uh, and uh, working and like learning new language and uh, you know this was uh, very tough so cycling was completely out of it um, and then um, on the contrary i started uh, smoking heavily like everybody else smoking, <laughs> it is, it was, uh, it's so hard for me to even imagine smoking but i'll take you i'll, I'll believe you if you tell me so we, so when is it that you started cycling again um, in Canada, actually, one day we decided both Mar with Marilla to quit smoking because she was just as heavy smoker as I was. And we decided to quit smoking in 1980, which is uh, what, uh, 40 years ago. 40 years. Yeah, we, one day we decided, well, that's enough of it. And then we threw, uh, threw away our cigarettes. <laughs> and then um, we decided to go on like a fitness uh, streak, you know, walking and then eventually we started running, jogging, running. And uh, in one year we decided to, to run a marathon, both of us, which we did in 1981. Wow. We ran Montreal wow. Marathon. Montreal Marathon, both of you. You see this? Oh, there we go. And and did you run? Did you run together as husband and wife the whole the whole route? The whole route. Do you see the picture? I do, I do. But I I don't know. Maybe you took the, waited for the photo and then one of you raced off ahead of the other one. Yeah. Well, no. This this was uh, this was our first marathon together. We trained for like a six months period. And we ran the whole distance at the same pace. The other people were walking and sitting and lying down. We, were, we just kept on going. Amazing, amazing. I did what Kasha and I, you know, I was always a runner and Kasha is just naturally sporty. And I ran, I did a half marathon once in Krakow with Kasha. And I was like, oh, Kasha, don't worry. You know, she goes, oh, you'll be fine. She goes, oh, if you want to run ahead, just go ahead. I said, sure, no problem. And I could barely keep up with her the whole race. So really? uh, I was oh, like, wow. she did me a favor by not racing ahead. Yeah, she runs like a gazelle. She runs great. Right. So you picked up, so, so this is years ago, you picked up cycling. But Marilla these days, she's not, Marilla is not much of a cyclist, but she likes, she swims, no? Yeah, she swims uh, daily almost in our swimming pool in the, in the building. And whenever we resort her, we have a swimming pool right, right outside our condo in, in Florida. So you're able these days, uh, for a while you've been spending the winters, as I guess you do when you're in Montreal and you want to be active year round, you spend, you and Marilla spend your uh, winters in uh, Florida, in Deerfield Beach. Uh, and is that, that uh, do you, you cycle down there as well? Yes, I take my bicycle to Florida and I, I join the bicycle group in uh, Boca Raton, and I am a member of club there. We have a beautiful cycling group. 
mostly octogenarians, uh, 18 and up. We let some less than 80 years old to ride with us sometimes. Some young punks. Yeah, young punks. And, uh, you know, right now, well, I'm in Montreal, so the weather is, I, I'm riding outside now. And uh, really, um, as soon as uh, they, they let us to move around a little bit more, uh, we expect some visitors to come and uh, we'll do, do some uh, riding together. That's great. I, you know, Marcel, for us, you know, the ride, we, we came up with the ride. We had the first year, it was fine. And then, you know, really you joining the ride I think really brought the wide ride to a different level. Having, first of all, having an Auschwitz survivor with us and essentially riding along the path that you walked for, you know, for the most part. But not only that, just people getting to know you and, and be around you. For us, it was really an amazing thing. And I think that, that for us made us understand that we need to continue doing the ride. But tell me, what was it like when you first heard about, oh, there's a bicycle ride from Auschwitz to Krakow. Did it make sense to you? Did you think it was crazy? No, actually, you know, I, I, I learned about it on my way to Florida. I, I received email from a relative of mine and he was, uh, he noticed on the website, there was a ride uh, by, by a charity bike ride from Birkenau to, to Krakow, to JCC. And he, he knew my history. So he, he says, I think you should be interested in this. I just couldn't believe it. I, I said to myself, wow, this is like, um, well, would it be great to, to ride, to, to celebrate my uh, like uh, 70th anniversary of my liberation with a bicycle ride? Of course, at that time, I was already riding in, in Florida. I was quite advanced in riding. So I, all my life, I was uh, cycling. So cycling is nothing new to me. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, I remember uh, contacting JCC and uh, took a while to get a response from uh, Sebastian and Agnieszka, but I, I never forget it. Took a while to get, oh, do you hear that Sebastian? <laughs> we were called <laughs> out. Oh, um, <laughs> we're gonna have a meeting after this. Uh, it took a while to respond. You know, listen, Martha, we well, have, it was, there are plenty of 80-year-old Holocaust survivors who want to do bicycle I, rides with us. We can't just answer right away. I tell you why. <laughs> I tell you why, John. Because it was Christmas time, and uh, I probably JCC was not uh, very active during this day, fair enough. this time of the year, and everybody on vacation. So it was, to me, like not, not okay. being responded in one day for this kind of uh, event was too much. <laughs> I expected right away to somebody to call me, but well, I I, it's okay. Don't you know, Sebastian and Sebastian and Gish aren't in trouble. Don't worry. Yeah, no, no. We talked about it, and they they know <laughs> our position on it. We we love you, Sebastian Agnieszka. Wow. So tell me, Marcel, what was it like that first ride when you'd been back to Auschwitz before? So it wasn't the, the, the first time, but stand, standing there at Birkenau under the gate with, you know, bicycles being ready to go. What, what was that moment like for you with your family? And I should re remind everyone, Marcel's son and two granddaughters from Israel were doing the ride with him. So instead of walking out of Auschwitz, Birkenau, walking back to Krakow to look for your family, you were 70 years later on a bicycle with the family that you created riding together with them from the darkness of Auschwitz to the to the light of, of Krakow. What was that like? Well, let me tell you, I was really over, overwhelmed by the by the event itself, you know, standing there. Uh, and uh, I, I don't remember walking because it was so, so, so long ago. And uh, I realized that this was like a, a re reliving my, my experience from 70 years earlier. And it was, I was very, very excited and surrounded by all those people who, who just wanted to uh, take a photograph with me, shake my hand. And, 
it was really very emotional. You're a rock star, Marcel. Everywhere you go, it's like you know, walking around, walking around Krakow with you during the during the festival, during the Jewish Culture Festival time. During this, it's like walking around with uh, you know one of the Beatles. Yeah, well, I I I'm so familiar with Krakow, but like I never left. Actually, I never lived in Krakow after the age of uh, uh, five. Yeah. After the war, uh, we lived in Wrocław. But somehow I'm very familiar with the uh, crack of uh, streets and names and uh, regions and uh, of the uh, landmarks. And um, I don't know, I, I just feel like a, I am a Krakowian. Absolutely. Listen, I was going to say, I know you lived in Wrocław, you became a cyclist in Wrocław, you studied in Wrocław, you met Marilla in Wrocław, but for we, you're a Krakowian, Marcel. We no, no way of no, no two ways about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Marcel, I don't know if you see that I'm wearing. We we unveiled the jersey. This no, is I, I, I don't know why why I lost this picture. It, it doesn't. It's okay. I'm gonna send you one anyway, Marcel. We're gonna send you one for today. We'll send you one. We'll get one out to you today anyway. So don't worry if you don't see that. So I wanted to ask you, Marcel. I know that you had a very special experience, especially as a, as a cyclist, a cycling fan, not only someone who rides his bike, but a true fan of the sport that are you telling me about all these races that you watched over the years and you participated in, in, in races yourself. We, a big thing for us was having Greg LeMond, the three-time Tour de France winner. So what was it like for, you know, for a cycling fan to, to ride with Greg LeMond, I, you know, I think for, for those of you out there, uh, this is like being a basketball player, maybe playing on your high school team, playing in a pickup game in a league, and then suddenly being able to play basketball with Michael Jordan. Uh, so what, what, was, what was that like for you, Marcel? I, I think it's a good, good uh, comparison. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Greg was uh, always, I was always my... Uh, my idol and uh, meeting him in person and his wife, Kathy, was was a fantastic experience. I, I keep in touch with him and he occasionally calls me and uh, we talk and uh, well, he, he was he, he was willing to ride the, again uh, in the uh, Ride of the Living, but uh, I, I don't know how this thing will Work out this year or the next year. Um, we'll yeah. see. We cannot plan too far ahead. But yeah. he was really, we keep in touch with Greg. He's such a lovely guy. That was for us. Yeah, he, he actually promised to, to give me a, an e bike. He's now into e bikes. Ah. So. There you go. I, will you, an e bike? I think you're not. You, you, would, would you, you are you, do you think, would you like to have an e bike now? Would you use that or you would still train on your regular bike and just? No, no, I'm, I'm still on my, on my yeah. bike uh, from, uh, you know, from uh, Jonathan Cooper. Oh, that's he, right. Another friend, another friend that you met on the ride who's a good friend of us here on the ride, Jonathan Cooper, who's also a competitive cyclist, who is Greg's friend, who bought Greg on the ride and uh, Greg uh, uh, Cooper, Jonathan has been a great friend of us here in Krakow and helped with the signs and just uh, it's nice that you you and uh, Jonathan have created a very special uh, friendship. Yeah, actually, I, I think I'm going to invite Jonathan in uh, as soon as the condos open. We're going to do a virtual ride of the living with him and I'm planning to use the uh, racing track facility in Montreal, the F1, Formula One uh, racing track in Montreal for, for our virtual ride for the living. Wow. Well, that's, wow. News. that's news, everybody. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> on, a, on a Formula One track. It's, it's, I was about uh, to say, if you're in a Formula One car, the 60 miles turns into 600. We want you to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a very good facility. I, I rode on this uh, track a few times already in past years. Uh, actually, I met uh, the Israel Cycling Academy team on, on that track. They rode with me uh, probably three years ago with um, Gisa Gib and uh, all the other yeah. 
with Israeli cycling. One of them was the Israeli cycling champion at one point. And the, one yeah. of the other guys from the Israeli cycling academy was an, in the, an Olympic cyclist. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, from Namibia. From Namibia. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we have a nice partnership actually. We've done a lot with the Israeli Cycling Academy because we have a, a great friend in common and that's Melinda Goldrich in Aspen who did the ride with us this year and uh, is actually the one, her foundation is the one who's making the film about the bicycle ride that's gonna come out this yeah. year, which is of course, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the, star, the star of the show there, Marcel, of course, but uh, she's also very involved with the Israeli Cycling Academy. So it's nice to have this synergy that many of us are able, in the, you know, in the, we've sort of dipped our toes a little bit into yeah. the cycling world and be able yeah. to work with uh, some of these great people. Yeah, yeah, I know Ran Margaliot is the manager of the team. I know, I know some of the hangers on, like uh, Jonathan Friedman from yeah. Brooklyn. Well, it's, 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 it's a very, I, I gain a lot of friends due, due to the right of the living. I, I have many, many, acquaintances and friends because of the ride. I really changed, it changed my life. I mean, anybody who, who rides uh, uh, the right of the living is, uh, comes out uh, ch a changed person, I I'm sure. Well, no, I, I agree, Marcel. I always say that there are things that I do for work and I'm here all the time and dealing with these issues. But when I get on that bicycle, and I feel the wind blowing in my face, and I see the gate of the the gate the you know gate of Birkenau behind me, and and riding away, feeling free and being openly you know proud to be Jewish and understanding how we're involved in in rebuilding Jewish life. It's really you know I think it's the highlight of my year every year. Yeah, and also the the support of uh, people al along the road. You know, we get lots of. Uh cheering on going from, from the local population, which is very encouraging. No, it's, 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 and you know, it's, it's also interesting how, how, how beautiful it is, the, the countryside. You don't think of beauty when you, in the context in it, at all of Auschwitz, uh, but, but the ride from Auschwitz-Birkenau to Krakow, it's, it's a beautiful ride. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah very so interesting. That'll be, that'll be 2021. But, Mar but Marcel, you, you, I mentioned before that your family has joined. Now, how, how is that for you? Was it important to have them join and do the ride with you? Oh, absolutely. Especially now, my, my older granddaughter got married just um, two, three weeks after I visited uh, uh, Krakow in January. Shout out to Marcel. <laughs> Absolutely. Mazel tov, Marcel. Yeah, thank you. So she's coming with her husband and my younger granddaughter, which was with me in during 75th anniversary, Hen, who you know very well. You remember Hen? Oh, I, rem I remember both of them, of course. Yeah, so Hen is, uh, will come over also with her boyfriend as well. So I'm very, very excited to, to ride. I mean, this is still one year, one year from now. <laughs> I'm patient. Got to be patient. We're all excited for next year, Marcel. And I think by then, you know, the, the film will have come out. It's going to come out at some point this year. I don't know, in the winter, I guess things get all held up because of the Corona situation. But, you know, I'm, it's for us, we're just pulling our hair out, well, not me, because it's already a done, done deal with my hair, but trying to figure out how to be able to host all the people that are gonna come to Krakow once they find out, I think, about the ride because of the film. We were already looking at about 300 people this year and the roads are not such huge roads and uh, it's complicated. So we'll, next year is gonna be really something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this year, I mean, we, you know, as you know, with the virtual ride, uh, you know, of course, we always have to be able to raise money. The JCC costs money to run and we get, you know, all the money really comes from donations. But with this year with the virtual ride, we really want people just to join this movement. We really feel it's a movement to uh, believe in and support Jewish life once again in Poland. So my question for you really is that as somebody who experienced the Holocaust, uh, who saw the world, the worst that the world has to offer, um, 
who you know who suffered in many ways and in, in this in this place is there any doubt in your mind that jewish life should once again be happening in poland are you skeptical about it do you think poland is not a place for jews uh, no i i think jews uh, live in every place on earth and krakow is really a uh, a very, very deeply rooted uh, traditional place for Jews over the centuries. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> during the Holocaust, this, well, the life in uh, Jewish life in Krakow was practically wiped out. And whoever was left uh, tried to, like myself, I pretended not to be Jewish for many years living in Poland. And uh, had I not, emigrated to Israel, I would probably be one of your pe people that would come to, to JCC. Uh, and I've seen, to, I've seen, I've seen. Rejoin my, my Jewish roots. I'd see you every day then, Marcel, but still, I'm happy that your life turned out. I think it, your life has turned out pretty wonderfully, Marcel. Yeah, well, I'm very pleased. Yeah, I, I'm very proud of uh, what I did and uh, my family's uh, secure and they live in Israel and they, they work and they, they keep in touch. Uh, a very, every reason to be proud. You should be very, very proud, Marcel. I didn't mention before that you're an engineer. You worked for Bombardier, you built airplanes. Uh, so built a, built a career for yourself uh, after, after moving to, after leaving, after leaving Poland and studying. Um, it's been really an honor, Marcel. I have to tell you that, you know, I, I come into contact with a lot of people and a lot of survivors and people that have done great things in their life and built companies and run races and done many, many things. And I don't think I've come into contact with a person that has had as much of an impact, as much of an influence on everybody that comes near him as you do. There's just such a, I don't want to just wow. embarrass you. I don't want to embarrass you, Marcel, but there's, Thank you, no, no, there's so much. <laughs> no, there's, I, I think for somebody to have been, seen the horrors that you've seen and to been, what, been through what you've been through, but to be so positive and so gentle and just your message of forgiveness and this idea of always moving forward, not being stuck in the past is I think absolutely exactly the message that we're trying to get here, at, trying to, get, to give people at the JCC, Marcel. Yeah, I'm, I'm always having a discussion with people about Jewish life in Krakow, the future of Jewish life. And I keep on telling them and it's, it, it will take a long time for Jewish life to be, be uh, what it was uh, like before the Holocaust. It's, it, it took centuries to build it up and it's probably going to take maybe not centuries, but long time. So Jonathan, you are on the, on the very early stages of building Jewish life in Krakow. You're doing a fantastic job, yeah. Thank you, Thank you Marcel. With, with help from, from our friends around the world and with help people that inspire us every day like you do. So I wanna thank you very much for being with us, Marcel. You've been, as always, an inspiration. Miss you, we love you, you and Marilla, send, send my regards. I know we spoke yesterday, but send, send our love for me and Kasha and from everybody here in the community. Okay, I, I, would, I just want to say one more thing. Of course. That, uh, you know, I, I keep on saying that you, you, the great job that you are doing, but you have fantastic help from your staff and you are able to, to motivate them and to, to work with you and, uh, this is this is your success of being able to influence people around you to help you in in doing this job that you do. Well, thank you, Marcel. Thank you. It's, it means it means a lot to hear that from you. So I just want to thank Marcel. I'm going to kick it to Ryan in one minute. Ryan has a message for us, but I want to just encourage you, please sign up for Virtual Ride for the Living. Sign up yourself. Sign your family up. Get your friends to sign up. You want to get, uh, you want to get a, a, a free jersey, get 18 people. You want to send us some money, send us $180 and up and we'll send you a jersey. You sign up during, during the AMA and we're about to finish. We're going to put you in a hat, put the names in a hat and we're going to send somebody a free jersey. But whatever you do, jersey, this beautiful jersey or no jersey, just please sign up 
join us in this, in this important mission to show the world that Jewish life once again is thriving. So go ahead, Ryan, what do you got to tell us? So really quickly before we go, I wanted to plug some of the events that we've got, some of the programs that we've put together. Um, on Friday, the very first event, aside from today's AMA, uh, so really will be our community plug some bike slash run slash walk. Programs that we, uh, we are encouraging uh, everybody on Friday, to uh, the very first event aside start. From AMA, oh, is there some uh, feedback? There we go. So we're encouraging on Friday everyone to start. Uh, they're, they're biking, they're running, and they're walking if they haven't already. Um, and we're going to all symbolically begin at 8.30 in the morning, wherever you are. Um, and you can start that morning. I think we're going to leave the event up until about 12 p.m. But you can RSVP on Facebook, and you can also let us know on Strava. Strava is the, uh, the application that we're using to track everyone's mileage and to stay in touch um, with the actual physical part of the ride. Uh, this year. So, so that's Friday. And then on Sunday, we have the very first uh, podcast club, which is going to be kind of like a book club. But instead of reading a book, we're going to ask you to listen to a suggested podcast while you're running or walking or biking this week. And then on Sunday at 4 p.m. EST, or I guess EDT right now, uh, we're going to get together and I'm going to host and we're going to discuss the podcast. Uh, and we'll all get to, to stay in touch with one another and share some success stories from the road as well. Uh, this week's podcast actually features Jonathan from an interview that he did with a local with a local project in in Kashmir's called Project Kashmir's, um, and it's going to be a great jumping off point. We're going to catch you up on on how the JCC in Krakow was founded, um, and a little bit about the the Jewish community and some of the history of the region. And then over the next few weeks, we're also going to be continuing with weekly bikes, runs, and walks. And we'll have some more podcast episodes to listen to as well, to tune into. Um, and then in addition to those two things, we're also going to have some great programs with Holocaust education, uh, where we're working with a Holocaust educator uh, to do a quick tour, either virtually or in person, but virtually uh, through Auschwitz or through Birkenau. And we've also got some other stuff that we're going to that we're going to pepper in and, and sprinkle throughout the, the month. So. We're really excited. We hope that everybody can join for some or all of these. Uh, and, uh, and, and that should be it. Wonderful. I know it's exciting to, we wanted to make sure that there was an educational component and people could connect to each other, not only just uh, get out there and exercise, but please sign up, exercise, join us. Uh, next week, I'll be back. It'll be the regular day. So next Thursday, that is June 11th. I won't reveal the guest yet, but it's going to be a good guest. I'm going to be an hour earlier. So the usual time, which is uh, 10 a.m. New York time uh, next Thursday, that's June 11th. And please, everybody, stay safe, take care, be kind to each other, and let's hopefully that we'll meet under better circumstances next week. So thank you. See you on the virtual ride for the living. Bye, everybody.